Okay, yeah, so I'm uh I've been playing around with this new uh dog called Bitwig. It's pretty dope. One of my clients uses it, so over the course of a few months, I've gotten a chance to see him navigate the software, and I'm not, I picked up a few things. This is, this is like a little, a little dance track I've been working on. I'm in Windows uh, on my Mac. Pretty cool. any case okay so um i guess i can add some voices and also i'm gonna change the envelope i'm gonna make this more like a pad so and give it a long release so. Okay, so just to kind of like explain what happened there, I had this thing set to one bar and I'm holding down the keys and of course I can't hear it because the filter is cutting it off. The filter is happening so quick that we can't hear this sustain thing here. It just cuts off. You see it, it kind of like just goes up and then it goes back down. And this is still happening. But we can't hear it because the filter cutoff is kind of all the way down here. So I have to make that longer. If I make this two bars, this envelope is controlling my cutoff filter. Now we should be able to hear the sustain. You know, because you see it's taking longer to happen. You know? So just, you know, teachable moment. I don't know. If you care about that, let me know in the comments below. Um, and also, right, it really helps me if you watch my video to the end. Heck, I don't, you know, even if you don't watch it, but you just play it to the end, that counts as a view. It looks really good for the YouTube algorithm, and it allows me to monetize my channel so I can bring you more free content. Please, please, please watch my videos to the end. Subscribe, share, comment. It, all of it is good at all. It helps. It helps, believe me. And I appreciate it. Okay, and just for the record, this is kind of... Sometimes I don't... You know, I'm not a pianist. And I got a little bit of music theory. I can read a little bit. And I can certainly look up chord charts and see what key I'm playing and then figure out what notes I should be playing and not. In fact, I can kind of even look at this grid that I got going here and see what notes I'm playing um, and just say, okay, I can kind of stick to this and play, I can play C sharp, C sharp. <laughs> So of course all of those notes go, and I could do that, but sometimes I just prefer to mash keys and, you know, just do anything. And C does it work with my song, and I discovered textures and interesting things here. At the end of the day, if it works, it works. So like I said, sometimes I prefer to just mash keys find things and then actually hit record or sometimes I'll do this and I'll just hit record just when I thought I was find, finding something my keyboard just kind of dodged left on me so but um I like that and by the way I'm hitting G so my keyboard don't come back I, I went from the F sharp to the G and I like that and 
And so now I'm just trying to find a top to go with it, probably the D. And I think, um, I think C sharp, D, you know, I know I got the B to work with. So we'll figure it out, like, but I like how this sounds going from this. something to end it felt like it was starting to work sometimes and i know this is full of mistakes it's too loud there's all kinds of stuff wrong with it but sometimes i'll kind of ignore all of that and then just work on my patch and make my patch fit better into the song because you know remember i just started with the you know the um default patch and then started playing with the envelope and a little bit of filtering but you know, and, and, and I did some Venus energy to him, but this isn't the sound that I wanted. I don't really know what I wanted. I'm pretty sure this isn't it, but I just needed some place to start, you know. Um, so what I'm going to do is initialize this and then just start playing around with the patch. Um, that is easy enough to come back to for me. So... Um, I'm not worried about losing the vibe or anything. Um, and I'll just, you know, start spinning knobs and playing around and seeing what I come up with. So I'm going to play around with a couple of, like, I got a couple of things that I want to try. One, I want to try to create, like, a little pluckiness on the beginning of each of those notes. Um, I don't know if this is really the best solution for that, but I'm going to try it. And then, um, but I also hear, like, that long filtering, um... In fact, I'm not even positive that what I'm trying to do will work, but... So you see, I quickly turned it into a pluck, a plucky thing, and so to give it some sustain, I'm, I'm going to create a wash with some reverb and delay, um, and let's just see how that goes, um, Travis. <laughs> Okay, and I'm gonna add the compressor. Um, and I could go full on like um, OTT and just kind of enunciate that. Book. But that's actually not what I want to do. Um, I just really kind of want level. So, um...
Okay, so I'm digging that a little bit more. Um, and, you know, I could get into EQ and it and all kinds of stuff, but... Um... Remember, I want that sustained one too. So I'm going to add another layer and just, I don't know, just with some contrast, I'm going to use a, a square wave. Like a pulse. Well, it's not a pulse, I guess it's a square now. Um, just for contrast. And I'm not going to put it through the filter, so we should get a sustained note. And um, we'll try to figure this whole thing out. Um, for now, I'm going to try to turn up the envelope. We'll see how that goes. So, just for the sake of argument. I've got my sustain So maybe, I don't know, I could go a couple of ways. I could add a filter and just kind of shave off some of that top end. I don't know, either way it works for me. Like, for now, I, I guess I'll do this. just want to, um, I guess, play around with molding the sonics and putting them where I want, and I'm taking a little bit of a lazy approach. I could sit here and play with the scent. Like, I've got a general idea. i got a sonic palette here to play with, so... kind of bring back in some of that um this
sonically, like, I'm cool with this. I, I'd like to tame the top end a little bit more, but I think I'm going to do that here in the synth. I spoke before about doing that thing, that little sweet thing. I'm, I'm gonna borrow from what we were doing earlier. We meaning me, <laughs> um, and see if that same shape will work. Um, I don't know, um, but I'm gonna give it a shot, and I'm gonna pull this down a little bit just so I'm starting darker, and we'll see how this works out. Oops. Okay, my computer is bugging out a little bit, but I think I'm gonna try a longer pattern. Let's know about this device it's free this guy tau chorus it's essentially this is the chorus from a juno 106 a recreation of that and it's brilliant listen to that already kind of fat love <laughs> in a good way like feminine fat the good stuff Okay, so I uh, just noticed I'm clipping my master. I have no like subgroups or anything that help me here. Um, this is loud on its own. Uh, I can turn it down a little bit, um, but I'm not gonna fuss over my mix levels and clipping because I'm pretty sure a bit wig. Like most dogs have built-in soft clippers and stuff. In fact, I know that Bitwig has built-in soft clippers because of this thing that I was playing around with, FX Grid. Like, when you do the FX Grid, this is like their blank palette for building a plugin. If you look in here on the output, it's got a clipper built right into the output. So you can choose between soft and hard clipping. Or off. I see I'm kind of clipping my EQ even, so I'm going to pull this back a little bit and then I can kind of pull this up. Okay. 
nice. So I can see easily like where I can go back in and edit my bass track and you know do like a little bit of a, a shift you know from the B. Um, let me see what is it playing. Um, and of course my keyboard is not working. Let me see if I can do it on my. So maybe I could do something like that. Okay, my QWERTY keyboard doesn't go up another note, but... Uh, and, uh, which is what I was trying to play. But, um, you know, so I've got something that kind of can match my new chords, and, and, and I'll figure out the rest, you know, the polygrade, whatever. I can make my song kind of a little bit more interesting. And who knows, maybe I'll even keep like the monotony for a certain section of the song and then kind of introduce that a little bit later, you know, tease it at the beginning and then introduce it later or something. Um, a lot of things we could do, interesting things here. But um, just uh, I felt like I should record this. I did. Um, please like, share, whatever. Um, like I said, if you want to collaborate, I'm always open for that. My phone number is in most of these videos. I'm not hard to reach. Um, and don't feel like you got to be a superstar to get at me just because a million years ago I had a hit record or some crap. Um, I'm a regular dude, and I'm always up for it pretty much. Um, you just have to inspire me. So, you know, and... And, and I hope that I inspire you as well, you know, because um, if there's no vibe, like, what are we doing? Um, you know, but, yeah, let's let's figure it out, uh, folks. Um, and by the way, I really kind of, I like Bitwig so far. There's pluses and minuses. I'll probably do, like, a little bit of a review and um, share my, my feelings and my insights. Um, when I first started, I wasn't... Um, working in this view at all i was working in the arrangement view kind of like ableton's arrangement view and and by the way bitwig was made by people from that camp um i guess they had some other ideas and the people at ableton didn't agree in the direction they wanted to move so they kind of you know they made their own and 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 you know um so it's very similar to Ableton. It has a lot of the same tools like this, you know, this um, scene thing where you can launch clips or you can kind of produce in the arrangement view that kind of more closely resembles Logic and Pro Tools and all that stuff. Um, you know, I like that they have these cute things like where you can kind of have these different views that kind of pop up and disappear. And, and of course, I don't have anything there, but, you know, it's set up so that it's very flexible and you can have like different screen sets almost so to speak and see what you need to see for the way that you're working you know um i like that it shows all of my plugins chains and all of that and certain views um you know these looping functions are really cool when you get into audio because the way it handles audio as you can actually drag audio into a clip and edit within the clip. It, it's, it's interesting. We'll get into it. Um, and, but what intrigued me the most was a function that, um, that basically my client and I kind of weren't really, um, digging into and that's this whole idea that that this door is actually a synth. Like 
So this whole polygrid thing and all of these little modules is kind of like a modular synth, like where you you start out and you can kind of like add, like, I don't know, I'll add like an EQ to this, um, I add a filter, I just kind of add it right before the output and... So I've got kind of a synthesizer here. Let me come up off it just so it's easier to hear. So we've got this, this synth here that I can kind of go polyphonic and then kind of Add like an LFO and kind of make that move, I guess. Um, sure, so we'll do that. Got an LFO, um, and so I'll modulate that. And um, I love that it gives you like these big displays. And when you click show help. It shows you the help for the module that we have selected. Let me select the filter just for the sake of argument, right? It's gonna show me the help. It explains like what everything does. But guess what? It's still active. Like I can still EQ it. It's, it's, and, and it's got my help right here, you know? So I can see like what each of these things do. But it's, it's pretty dope that it has all this stuff built in. So far, you know, so, so far it's got my interest. Um, I love this swarm. It's like automatic uh, super super soul. So they got a module that's a super soul. So, in any case, um, pretty dope, and like I said, I'll get into um, doing a, um, a review, um, but I want to dig a little bit deeper. some drastic stuff happen and then this it's cool that it's kind of like they're forward the the way that they think is kind of like 
I can get my oscilloscope right there and see what I'm doing. Maybe put a spectrum analyzer in there. Um, so far, I'm very happy with it. You know, and look at me clipping all the way. 100%, 100% clip. Like, yeah, and let's, let's just see what happens if I crank that some more. <laughs> I'm curious. I don't even want to see what the videos look like. They can't go loud in here. So there you go. Good stuff. When I get a little bit better with this thing, more adept, and I can kind of get to a point and make a more concise video without the use of um, copious amounts of video editing, um, then I'll do a video. So, yeah, um, peace and love. Stay safe out there. Happy uh, music game. Peace.